On your left hand side you'll see the metal bridge that takes you into the castle. York's between these three bridges. Now the only thing on this riverbank is the National Railway Museum. So if you're not doing the National Railway Museum today, you don't have to cross the river. Everything else is like the pantomime. It's behind you. No, straight across, straight up down. It's a different road. I've done, done this new one. So if you're not doing the National Railway Museum, you don't need to cross the bridge today. Now we're going to turn right in a moment or two and go into a street called George Hudson Street. And he's one of our railway kings here at York. I can, you can learn about him at the National Railway Museum. But first, this hill in front here, local folk will tell you it's the hill that the Grand Old Duke of York marched his 10,000 men up and down. And that's because it's the only hill in York, really, but I can tell you that's a load of rubbish. The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men, he marched them up to the top of the hill. That was the peak of his military career. Then he went to France and he fought a battle and he lost it. And he got his men and he marched them down the hill again. That was a decline in his military career. And despite what anybody else tells you, that's the truth behind the Grand Old Duke of York. Ring a ring of roses, the ring marks on the skin were supposed to be a mark of the plague. Pocket full of poses, the belief the flowers kept the plague away. Tissue, sneezing was a sign of the plague, all fall down, you're dead. And that's why today, when you sneeze, people will say, bless you. That's the reason they do it. Okay, so this is George Hudson Street, you'll learn about him at our National Railway Museum. He's one of the railway kings here at York. He was a local shopkeeper. And during the reign of Queen Victoria, he spotted the potential of the railways and thought if you could get the main London to Edinburgh line via York, with a bit of luck, some of the wealth and prosperity would follow it. But being a grand old Yorkshire lad, he conned, he connived, he bribed, and he embezzled, and he went bankrupt, and he fled to France. And another gentleman took over called George Lehman. So we've got two railway kings here at York that made us the railway capital of the Victorian um, north of England. And if you go straight under the arch in front of us, and walk in a straight line under the railway bridge on the left hand side you'll find the National Railway Museum and it's free. So it takes a Yorkshire last to tell you where to go to find something for now. Alright, all these banners are to do with Le Grand Depart on the 7th of July, the um, Tour de France come to York and that's what all the yellow bicycles are about as well. So we're going to bear left in a moment or two and I want you to look on your right hand side and you're going to see a statue of George Lehman. Now local folk will tell you from the toes to the chin it's George Hudson and first railway king but when he fell from power they lopped his head off, put George Lehman's on and rededicated the statue. And why not, if you can get two statues for the price of one, it's excellent value for money. And I thought that was a leg pull and I did some research and it's not, it's true. On your right this is the Royal York Hotel. Now Queen Victoria travelled by train from London to Balmoral and she stopped at York for a comfort stop and a cup of tea. She hated York, vowed she'd never come back and she never did. And for that one cup of tea, it gets its royal approval, that little hotel. On your right hand side, York Railway Station, owned in 1877, said to be the largest and grandest in Europe when it was built, only later outshone by Grand Central Station in New York. But look over the picket fence here, teeny tiny little house with a tall chimney. A lot of the local people don't realise it's still there. That's the station master's house from the first railway station in 1839 and it was inside the wall was our original railway station. But every time they expanded the station they had to knock part of the wall down so they actually closed that railway station and put the new one on the outside of the wall on your right so it didn't matter how big it became. Okay right we've come up to the first of our great gateways today and this is called Micklegate Bar. It's known as the front door of the city and the busiest gateway into York because we're going to go down the old London road which is straight in front of us before the A1 was built. And coming across from right to left is the main road from the Pennines. So this was physically the busiest gateway into York. Also known as the Royal Gateway, it's the one the Queen enters on all state occasions. Now I'm not talking about when she comes incognito with a handbag and a headscarf for the Ebor race meeting next month. She always has a horse running on Ladies' Day, so she's always here at least for Ladies' Day. 